we have always said that the biggest negotiation we did was actually uh, with our own base. I think that's common. I don't think it's you know it's, it's not a revelation you know, um, because you know if 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 you're if you're in struggle for that length of time, then there's a a different mentality which is necessary. I think our leadership had it, or at least a number of people in the leadership, and. I mean, from even in the seventies, I remember Jerry Adams was writing articles um, about uh, how do you move into a peaceful uh, future. And of course, in the eighties, I think it was uh, towards a lasting peace, and in the nineties, it was uh, um, scenario for peace. I might have got them mixed up once, yeah, and yeah. you know. So there was talk about it. There wasn't something. There wasn't talk. There was a lot of talk in jail as well. Moving into that, I got out in nineteen eighty nine. The conflict was still ongoing. But I stepped out into, I think, a different atmosphere where there was conversations uh, trying to uh, move the whole thing forward. Obviously, a way back as far back as the 70s into the 80s, I think there was an acceptance. There was a document, I think it was document 37, but at one stage from a General Glover saying that Republicans should not be defeated. And that type of, uh, if you like, I, I, I don't know if I can describe it as an atmosphere, certainly a reality, you know, that there was a, in, 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 in those terms, in conflict terms, that it was a stalemate, I think also fed into, you know, what do we need to do? And I'm saying this from a Republican point of view, whatever other people were, were, were thinking. Uh, but it was a hard uh, a hard and difficult and very delicate, actually, if I could put it that way, conversation to have. Because if you're, if you're in armed struggle, you're militant. That's the mentality. Um, and the same people, especially in leadership, uh, and I emphasize the same people nearly have to develop that mentality of fighting an opponent or an enemy into, okay, well, what 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 can we do? What can we change? How can we bring this to a different way of moving forward? And I suppose that, without going on a lot about it, that was the, the atmosphere we were in, and it took um, all sorts of uh, talks. Set said that into, I mean, I was involved in uh, a meeting with the representative of the British government, uh, which was private, and die with Martin uh, McGuinness in 1993. And I, I remember that the person who was talking to us said, you know, that it, it is inevitable that there's going to be United Ireland. And, um, you know, we accept that. Now, he was one person. And and uh, some of the conversation after it was, you know, it's okay somebody said that in, in the room, and we actually didn't believe it. But um, what we need to do is is bring this more into the open. And of course, there were also back channels um, uh, that Martin was involved in um, for a considerable period of time and continued on. It was quite sporadic. So there was the idea that we, we needed, and you and I'm saying this, I mean, I wasn't involved in all of this, but um, I became involved. Uh, um, when I, when I, obviously when I got out of jail. And um, we headed in towards where I was involved in the first sort of grouping that was getting together, trying to discuss this out, where can we go, what can we do, and what are the contacts. The other thing about back channels, to say this, is is that a, 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 an honest back channel is, is uh, crucial at times, quite critical. But what you were getting was all sorts of good people who were coming forward and wanting they thought that they could do this and they could do that and sometimes you had to close them down because there was too many. They didn't really know what they were doing and all of that. But if you if you were able to find people of honesty, um, then that was good and, and, and on occasion we had that. And sometimes we had it for for quite a long period. Um so that was happening at leadership level. And then it was a matter of having that debate. Um going if you like going further down until the uh, middle leadership and until until the base. So in in ninety four, I mean, there would have been the sense having, you know, discussed it at length with the base that you know it it was if the British government played it fair, you were going to play it fair that that you know we we were going to get a permanent ceasefire. I know yeah. we had the, I know we had all the debate about the word permanent, but yeah. be, leave the word out of it. Well, we we had, we had many as you know many discussions about words you know could should will may can. Mm. But um, but that's right. I mean, what what um, what we moved into was uh, the the British were saying that if the conflict um, and if you have to remember, there was there were tests in it as well. You know, at Christmas time and that there was uh, you know three and four day 
ceasefires once or twice. And, and then uh, the, the British and, and John Major included um, were saying that all things were possible, if, if that was so. Uh, the IRA then agreed um, to have that, to facilitate. I mean, their, their position was they were a military organization. Their, their position was to allow the atmosphere or a better atmosphere um, to see where the talks went. I think, I, I suspect everybody, including Major, went into the talks tentatively, including ourselves. Let's try this out. Um, let's take it one thing at a time. Um, and and that's, to me, that's my memory of it. That's where it started off. We were we were meeting in different houses in Belfast and other places, uh, um, very regular, seeing where it went. And then there was a group, obviously, on a Jerry. Jerry is, is, was always a, a collective leader, so he was bringing more people, but obviously keeping it sort of quiet, and more and more people to sort of get opinions, um, and and stepping outside himself and Martin and others were stepping outside, um, the bubble, if you like, of republicanism and 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 getting other people's views. And as you know, Father Reid was 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 huge in, in in terms of that. So trying to get and looking for, um, different views, uh, that stepped outside it who were looking in, uh, and. Obviously, I mean, to jump forward a wee bit, I think what with them, what happened, of course, there was a, a cessation in uh, 94. And after, I think, 18 months, uh, it was very obvious, uh, certainly to the IRA, that um, this wasn't wasn't going anywhere. And and that, there was a big, you know, it was a big lesson in that because, you know, momentum is crucial. And what the British were doing now, they could argue that what they were doing was dependent on the unions at the time, that you know, the, the, the Conservative government was quickly becoming a minority government. And um, they were they were strong enough because to stay in power, as they said, that they needed the unions. So, I mean, looking back and in retrospect, that was probably their, their uh, notion, but they were putting up barriers, and that was very obvious. And then we had, uh, tragically, um, the IRA went back... Um, to conflict, and um, and then there was a bigger job to do in a way to try and convince people that you know there's still we still need to do this. And of course, when when uh, and I, I you probably correct me, I probably get my times wrong here, but certainly when when uh, Tony Blair came in, he, he had um, a huge majority. Yeah, and um, one of the things we used to talk about. There was this notion that you know you would get a better movement out of Labour Party. There was another view that uh, looking at like France and Algeria and all of that, you know, that it, it wasn't necessarily the party; it was that they had to be strong enough, whichever party it was, to be yeah. and make decisions. And I think that that was a huge. It's not to take credit away from from uh, Major and that, but. Uh, the circumstances then were changing. To, to move to that September 97, Jerry, that, that you know, we, Sinn Féin now were in the talks for the first time because they weren't in the talks in 91, 92, and they weren't in the talks in 96. So this th this was a bit of a shock to, to unionism and loyalists that they now had to, uh, they, they now had to deal with you, 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 you good guys face to face. Um, if we're slightly shocked ourselves, of course. <laughs> but when we when we started that 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 run in in ninety seven, um, what was the, the the sense that you know we could reach a deal then? You know, I, I know I know. I mean, I had endless Martin's meetings with Martin and Jerry, but you know, through the movement, did people believe it was it was possible to get a a, a deal? When you say the people, I I, I think after. Um, Ninety four, because the, the fact that there was a ceasefire was was huge in people's mentality, and if you remember the the, the scenes on the streets and all yeah. of that there, and then obviously it was a, a depression. I mean, m moving moving out of conflict, or at least the the idea that even moving out of conflict was was possible because it had been going on for so long. I think um, opened up or empowered uh, people. I don't want to sound like a psychologist, but but certainly in, in, in a general sense, it, it empowered people and it empowered us, certainly, to be able to, because the atmosphere was there, to be able to sit down and talk about all aspects of it. 
I mean, we went down to negotiations. Well, maybe certainly I did. Went down to negotiations with the idea, you know, these these Brits have, you know, 2,000 years of experience or whatever it might be and, you know, ruled as they claimed half or quarter of the world or whatever it was. And uh, you were sort of, you know, where's our experience from? And we did go on and get, uh, we got some from trade unionists, you know, um, individual trade unionists, and we also went to the South Africans and learned from them. They gave us a lot of help. And what 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 we found fairly quickly in the uh, discussions <coughs> was that the British didn't actually have a, a master plan, that the plan had been for many, many years a containment, inertia. They had no imagination in trying to go for it. And that's what had changed. That that is what had changed, and and you know, and as I say, the individuals uh, that we're talking about right across, or you know, John Hume to Jerry to Martin to yourself to you know, uh, Bill Clinton and uh, Tony Blair. Um, I just think there, that that's what created the atmosphere. I mean, that part of it came from the top, but there was an openness, a new openness, to talk things out. I think, and it was it was. Uh, Intense, you know. I mean, I was part of going out and talking to activists uh, throughout the uh, country. We were talking about traveling earlier on. I mean, I did a lot of traveling then with others, going around and trying to explain. You couldn't tell every every single wee stroke and dot of it, and, but certainly the direction of travel and what was the possibilities, but it mightn't happen. You always had to have, you know, don't false promise, don't do any of that. And, uh, I mean, it's a very political community. You have to remember that because it even through so much, you know. Uh, so people people were up for logic, you know, if you give them uh, decent logic. And of course, I'll always lose people. I mean, that's that's it. That's part of leadership as, as you move forward. But I think the, the leadership of uh, Martin and Jerry in Republican history is, is unique in the sense that uh, they were able to bring people along without going through that process.